Ah, good morning. Uh, typical Western Washington weather here today. Uh, we've got some drizzly, cloudy rain. A little cool outside, so we can't paint or really do much in the way of rocket building. So I decided that I would do a video on a tutorial for Jolly Logic Shoot Release. I've uh, been reading a lot uh, about it. I purchased mine a while ago. I've gotten to use it, and it's a, a game changer when it comes to basically doing dual deploy in a rocket that doesn't have a uh, a V bay or an electronics bay. So let's go ahead and open this up and uh, take a look inside. It has a manual. Uh, Drawing Logics, they, they built a very, very good piece of equipment here. Uh, it's got your quick start and your always reminder. It's got tips. Uh, don't turn it on. Don't forget to turn it on. Attach it to a tether or you'll lose it. Uh, it holds your parachute closed. It should never carry any shock cord tension. Perform shake release test before every flight, also a puff test. And the fact that your rocket's falling, so it could fall another 50 to 125 feet before the parachute actually opens up. So that's just something you want to remember. Uh, go on, it gives you the visual tour, what the buttons do, how to set it up, how to attach the elastic band. Um, Parachute loading steps, and again on their website it shows you how to fold a parachute. Key to success, the flight logic, um, recharging it, and what the different lights and things mean. Uh, I obviously modified my box. My box actually holds both my altimeter 2 and my 808 keychain camera, along with my chute release. And something I also packed in here, and I advise and suggest very strongly that if you don't have one, go out and get a uh, touchscreen stylus. This is for like t phones and tablets and stuff. It's got the very soft rubber tip. And that's because if you're like me, you have very fat fingers. I have very, very big fingers and even my pinky can't get in there and push the button. Well, the soft tip of this will do it without damaging it because they tell you don't use a sharp pointy object like a pen or a pencil. So my little tip is soft enough that it's not going to damage, but it will push the button. Also, it comes with its uh, pins, a primary and a spare, different size bands. You've got small bands here. Underneath the tray, there's larger bands, and then your tethers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the device itself. Uh, looks really good, really stoutly built. It looks uh, very appealing. Uh, you have your two switches, and that's it. We can turn it on, and you're going to see it cycle. And then it's telling us what the battery charge is here. And this is the last altitude setting that we had it for. And the last flight I did was 400 feet for an altitude where I wanted the chute to open up. We can adjust it up. And we can adjust it down. And if we take it all the way down, it does what's called a self-cycle test. So it counts down. Then it releases. And then shuts off. So let's go over the common failure points. Uh, people lose it. Why do you lose it? Because you forget to attach it to the rocket. Okay, it comes with a couple of tethers. We just take the tether and we hook it on. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have it hooked on. Now, uh, we want to hook it to a rocket. Let's go ahead and grab something that's appropriately sized. Here I've got the Estes uh, High Flyer XL. Little, these are great little things. I made uh, blocks with uh, a gal, uh, trough made in them, and then just felt put over the top of them. It holds rockets, so you're not damaging the finish. Okay. So now, remember when we're attaching this, we don't want it to take shock cord tension. We want it to be free and loose attached to the parachute. So our attachment points would be where the shock cord attaches to the shroud lines or to a shroud line itself. And in the, the little manual, it shows it being attached to a shroud line. Uh, here you see the tether hooked to a shroud line of a parachute. I myself prefer attaching it to the shock cord just to make sure that I, I have something stout around it. If this were to come apart off of the uh, parachute for whatever reason, I would lose my altitude, uh, my, my chute release. Uh, folding the parachute, I'm not going to actually attach it to the shock cord on this one. 
Folding parachute is also paramount. So attaching it, we're going to put our rubber band in here, and it's kind of hard to pull the rubber bands through, so I learned a trick. Just take a loop of wire or string, something that's not going to cut the rubber band. Put it through, then feed your rubber band up through that, just partly through, and then pull until you can get it through. I would suggest storing these in an environmentally sound area like you should your motors indoors away from high heat. Uh, let's face it, rubber does not like high heat well. Uh, the cold can also degrade it, so let's make sure we're storing these where they're nice and well controlled. Cinch down our rubber band a little bit there. Now they show the easiest way to do your, your release pin is to just push the rubber band up through. Open it up, push it back through the loop. Now, I suggest making sure you know where your little clips end pieces are, where the, the, snip, the slip ring is, and make sure those are on the pin side, not the rubber band side, because that will dig into the rubber band, and eventually you'll have a failure in the rubber band. So we'll tighten that down, and then we'll make sure everything's nice and pretty the way we want it. Okay, so we've got our chute release set up. We attach it. To our shock cord or to our shroud lines. Now they recommend folding your chute up and then putting the shroud lines inside the chute. That's one of the catch points I keep hearing people talk about. My chute release got tangled up in the, the uh, shroud lines. My chute release got tangled up in the shock cord. We want to avoid that and excuse me here. <laughs> Allergy season's almost over. So we're gonna put our shock cord or our shroud lines inside the parachute to avoid them tangling up in the chute release. It shows how to do this again in the video online. So we've made a nice little package here. And then we're gonna take our chute release. And I suggest making sure that your chute release is set up in the line of pole so that it doesn't get yanked off your parachute. Now this is the big rubber band, so I wouldn't use it on this because it would just pull right th through there. We don't want that to happen. The shake test, you're gonna take and you're gonna shake and make sure that the, the parachute doesn't fall off the shock release. The shock release doesn't fall off the parachute. You're going to do a ground test. And the release test, they basically want you to power up, let it cycle, and then run it down and see if it will open itself up. And there it did open itself up. Now that rubber band wasn't stretched too tight so it could have very easily not had enough tension to pull it loose in which case you have a rocket falling on without the parachute. Then they suggest doing a puff test. The puff test is nothing more than making sure you insert and again make sure you're hooked to your, your shot cord or your parachute lines otherwise you'll lose your shoot, shoot release. You insert it into the tube the way you plan on having the rocket fly. You put your nose cone on and then you go to the tail end of the rocket and you blow air and you see if you, your puff of air will blow it out. What can happen is you can pack, not have it packed tight enough so it's actually it's too snug in there. It should slip in and out very freely. The second issue that some people have told me they've had is your shock cord mount. If your shock cord mount has some rough edges, it could snag and catch your chute release or your parachute. And if you wonder why your chutes get tore up a lot in one certain rocket, that might be why, is you have a rough edge on your shock cord mount. So that's something to check for, is their roughness. Now if there is, you can try and sand it down, cover it with a layer of epoxy to make it smoother. I'm going to pull out a larger rocket here to finish this demonstration. So we'll tuck this guy off to the side now. All right, for my demonstration purposes, I've got the uh, PML Public Missiles uh, BBX, Mini BBX. Uh, it's a piston rocket, so. Uh, the puff test really isn't as necessary here, just making sure that things fit in here. So, attaching. We've got everything put together and assembled. We want to attach it. I like using mini D-rings on anything of, of mid-power and high-power. It just 
it makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and attach at that point. Now my shoot release is attached securely to my shock cord. Now we're going to fold. So obviously this end would be attached to the upper portion of the rocket. So we fold up our parachute. Again, they have a video showing how to fold your chute and the fact that you want to put your shock cords this is not the neatest job I take a lot more care in pack packaging my chutes so now we have our shock cords inside where they're not going to tangle up in the chute release we're going to fold over and again we want to make it a tight bundle because if it's too puffy too loose it's going to snag in the body tube and not slide out. We don't want that to happen, so we're going to try and make it as tight of a bundle as possible. We're going to fold that over. Now again, we want to make sure we don't have shock cord tension yanking the chute release off of the parachute. So how can we make sure that doesn't happen? Well, we know that goes up towards the nose, and this goes up down towards the base. So what we can do is we can wrap our chute release around that shock cord so now the actual pull because it's going to go this way is not going to pull it loose from the parachute so we wrap it around again this is the big rubber band for the big parachute we insert our pin in the hole you hear it click in there we're going to do our shake test going to yank that thing and bounce it around make sure it doesn't come out and I'd actually like it a little bit tighter than that. I can make this bundle a little bit tighter and by folding it over one more time or something like that, make it a nice tight bundle. Then we pack it in there. Okay, we've already done our ground test. We're attached. And you know, do a checklist. Do whatever you have to do to make sure you do all this right. Now we're gonna slide it in there. We're gonna want to make sure that it comes out easily so I'll just take it and I'll give it a shake okay it comes out easy this is a piston so I can't really puff from the end so we'll go ahead and slide it back in there now the next problem what's the next problem turning the unit on uh, how can we make sure we turn the unit on well there's a couple of different ways we can um, leave the nose cone off and that way, you know, if it's a smaller rocket like the, the Estes High Flyer, we can pack everything in and just leave the nose cone hanging off the edge like that. Just don't attach the nose cone on. There's a visual indicator that you have to do something. What's something else we can do? Well, you can take a piece of tape and you can write, turn on shoot release, turn on electronics or whatever, and then tape it on the rocket with your igniter. That way you have another visual, hey, I need to turn on the chute release. And that way you don't take it off until you turn the chute release on. Because remember, we don't want to put our igniter in until our electronics are on. So we turn on all our electronics, put our igniter in, and then we're good to go. So now I can pull it out a little bit, turn on my chute release, set my altitude. Let's say that we want to go 300, slider back in there. Attach our other half, tuck it all in there. You know, obviously we got this ready to go on the launch rail. Put our nose cone on. Now we can put our igniter in. We pull the tape off, grab our igniter, load it up, we're ready to go. If you're doing the low power Estes motors, uh, maybe you just need a piece of tape with a, a note on it saying turn on shoot release. Uh, come up with something that works for you and your budget on how to make sure that you um, don't have a failure with the shoot release. Really great device. I love this to death. I can send this rocket up to two, three, four, five thousand feet easily 
And if this parachute, which is a, a very large parachute, would open up at that altitude, I'd be doing a very long walk to recover my rocket, and I don't like to do that. So the chute release will be a game changer in uh, the fact that I no longer have to walk forever to get my rockets. I can use the larger motors and send them up higher and basically get dual deploy without having to add an AVB and expensive electronics. And I can jump this from unit to unit to unit. So that's the Jolly Logic chute release. Uh, get one. It's a game changer. Uh, I love mine. I'm sure you'll love yours. Keep them flying straight. Keep them flying high. And remember, safety first. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I cut it all or not. Alright. Yeah. Alright,